Hi YouTube family, it's Daughter of the Most High. This is not my typical look. <laughs> my hair is dirty. I'm doing my hair color tomorrow and I let my hair get dirty before I do my hair color. So that's my plan for tomorrow. And so my roots are grown out and um, a little bit too far. I always let them grow out a little bit, you know, cause that's kind of that look, you know, and then it gets to be too much. So I'm doing my hair color tomorrow. So my hair is not clean. So I'm covering up with my, with my dog mom hat. So, and I've got on my sweatshirt from my daughter. Look at that. See that? Yeah. So, and it's gigantic. She got a huge one. So it's like, yeah. <laughs> um, so, but I want to share about a video that uh, I've been listening to tonight. It's by Glinda Lomax. And she, I've mentioned her several times in the past, but now it's been like probably even a half a year, maybe longer since I've mentioned Glenda. And, uh, but she, she did a video on uh, forgiveness um, January 4th. And whenever somebody does a video on forgiveness, I, I listen to it because this is an area of struggle for me. Um, I grew up in a hard way and was full of anger in my 20s and bitterness and pain and all the brokenness and all the stuff. But I got through that without healing. I got to a better place on that. Healing's different. And um, so I still wasn't healed when I met um, my ex. He's technically my covenant spouse, but I'm not standing. Um, he's an unbeliever. If the unbeliever departs, let him depart. So that's where it is, but I'm technically in covenant with him, so I can't remarry. So, um, but it was actually my um, covenant spouse or ex, you know, to me, he feels like an ex. I never felt like I had a marriage. So some people like really use that kind of language that makes it sound like they're, you know, standing for their marriage. And I'm not, I mean, it was misery for me. So do I pray for him? Yes. You know, um, he did take the, um, he's following the current agenda and he is an unbeliever. So, I mean, there's that too. So, um, it, it, I actually cried when, um, my daughter told me that I just kind of said it casually cause she doesn't fully understand. She understands that we don't follow the agenda, but she doesn't understand fully what it means. So when she told me that her dad had in fact, followed that I literally I did I cried not for me for my kids you know do I want him in hell no but this is my kids' dad you know and so it's just like ugh. so um that breaks my heart for them so they don't know that yet but at some point they'll know that and that's a tough one for me this whole season's a tough one for me but um I'm trying to um stay strong and trust God, God through everything. So anyway, um, so it was him and my sister that were uh, the two biggest offenders in my whole life, those two. And it always sounds like they had an affair and they didn't. Um, it's the same issue, but different sides of it. One is my sister, one is him, you know, and... <clears throat> They literally, like, tore me to shreds. They have torn me to shreds. It wasn't one thing. It was thing after thing after thing after thing after thing. So, um, I, I have to be honest with you. Um, um, there was a time, particularly regarding um, my kid's dad, that um, when he was, he was uh, taking me to court, and it's such a long story and I don't want to get into it. Sorry, my eye just itches and I paused last time, but sometimes I'm, ugh. Anyway, yeah, so he, uh, our daughter was 14, our son was 17. And meaning that when child support ends, you know, at about 18 and a half, um, the uh, county had uh, awarded me, he, he had been paying, um, hundred dollars a month for two kids for since I moved out and um and then the county when I was between jobs and was on um 
unemployment, they took a look at everything, which included my child support, and they bumped it from 100 to 900 a month, which is technically what it should have been the whole time. So, but it wasn't. And we divorced when uh, Krista was in third grade, Nicholas was in uh, sixth. So that's how many years. So anyway, so they were going to charge him that. And again, my son, our son, was going to be turning 18 in <laughs> like, you know, and he did drop out of high school. So it's they have to be in school in order to keep the award. So here, uh, my ex went to court, got a snake lawyer, um, pretended to want to um, actually parent Kristen, have some um, parental time. <laughs> And she's 14 and it, it the whole thing was so unbelievable and um he it cost me like between 10 and twelve thousand dollars fighting him i won't go into all that and i thought that he was going to try to turn because he does that he tries to turn he tried to turn our son against me i thought when he he was uh fighting for seven on seven off that um that he might be able to coerce um, our daughter a little bit more than um, our son because she seems to have a soft spot for him, which still astounds me, but she seems to. And um, so, yeah, he did that, it cost me all that kind of money. And then um, he agreed to do seven on seven off, which I never wanted. I don't wanna be away from my kids for seven days. I don't wanna be away from my kids for a weekend. You know, I became a mom to be a mom every single day. And so he was going to do seven on seven off. And I was like, how am I going to do this? So I just, and this was like way down the line. I mean, he has a laundry list that's very lengthy. Um, and, but this was like the last big major thing. And I'm going to be honest with you, it almost took me out. I literally sat before God and said, this is going to be my whole life because I met this man. And I have kids with this man, and this is the way he functions. It's never going to end. I might as well die. That's what I thought. This is the way it's always going to be. And it's by the grace of God that that, you know, I wasn't making, like, plans of what I would do or anything like that. But that's a conversation that I actually had with God. I was so wrung out by that time. So um, my unforgiveness, I hated him. I told God to kill him. At certain points, I said, you need to take him out. I can't live like this. Now, again, do I want my kid's dad, my kid's dad dead? No. But if he's going to sit there and thing after thing after thing after thing, oh, Lord. Yeah, it was so bad. So um, I actually said that. And I have a friend that was going through so many things, too. Um, this was some years later, and she had said the same thing. And I'm just saying that because she and I were talking one day, and she was so, I mean, he, uh, my ex doesn't cheat. He's got all the other behaviors, but he doesn't cheat. <laughs> it, like it would have mattered, you know, we had no marriage. But anyway, hers did and took up with another woman, and he, in fact, is still with that woman. And I, when we were talking, and she was just such a raw nerve, and Maybe you haven't lived like this, but I have, and my friend has. And she basically said the same thing. I wish he was dead. I wish I'd never met him. I wish he was dead. And I felt the same thing about my ex. And these people, like, torture us. Well, let me, let me just say that now that I'm through that time in my life, um, I regret being so hateful about him. And I tried to keep my mouth shut. You know that whole thing. I didn't, it wasn't a free-for-all free, free for all or anything. I did. But there was times when you're, you know, up to here with somebody's behavior. It would come out. And, you know, and so sometimes my kids would hear it and stuff like that. I don't speak to my ex. He doesn't speak to me. We don't, I can't even tell you what year we spoke last. I, I can't. But it's through text and things like that. Just while the kids were growing up. So... I deeply, deeply, I could, if I would have died during that time or taken my own life, I would be in hell because I had, I just hated this man. And then we won't even get into my sister. And uh, so I, I was just like dying, dying anyway. And that was after being raised in a really hard way and then going through an empty, lonely, 
and very afraid in my marriage, that kind of thing. I mean, I was just wrung out. It's like, why am I living if this is all my life's ever going to be? So the forgiveness issue is some something that I really have to keep myself in check on because I walk in forgiveness now. I don't have, he doesn't do anything anymore. You know, my kids are have their birthdays next month. Um, it's done. It's been done since uh, so Krista was 18. She's turning 22. So it's been done about four years. Well, I'm a different person, you know, and it wasn't so bad towards the end as she was heading towards 18. She was 14 when this last incident went on. So it's been some time that I've been able to heal and actually get myself in the right spot. So um, I just wanted to share that much. And anybody that struggles like I have and like a lot of us have, um, I just want to encourage you to just keep, you know, don't ever settle in unforgiveness. We have to be forgivers as believers or we end up in hell. Matthew, is it 615 that says if, you know, we're not forgiven if we don't forgive. And man, is that a tough one. So uh, Glenda did a fairly lengthy video, probably just over 50 minutes, but I'm going to tell you, 50, 5, 0. It's so good. She does such a good job on her videos. And she shares a story, and I want to play it for you. So, and I only have about six minutes left on my phone. Listen to this story that Glenda shares, okay? This is a true story, and it is really good. Roger Simmons which was hitchhiking his way home. He would never forget the date, May 7th. His heavy suitcase was making him tired and he was anxious to take off that army uniform once and for all. Flashing the thumb to the oncoming car, he lost hope when he saw it was a sleek black new Cadillac. To his surprise, the car stopped. The passenger door swung open. He ran toward the car, tossed his suitcase in the back and thanked the handsome, well-dressed man as he slid into the front seat. Going home for keeps? Sure am. Well, you're in luck if you're going to Chicago. Not quite that far. Do you live in Chicago? I have a business there, the driver said. My name is Hamilton. They chatted for a while, and then Roger, a Christian, felt a compulsion to share his faith with this 50-ish, apparently successful businessman. Compulsion. He kept putting it off till he realized that he was just 30 minutes from home, and it was now or never. Mr. Hamilton, I would like to talk to you about something very important. And then he simply told Mr. Hamilton about the plan of salvation and ultimately asked him if he would like to receive Jesus as his Savior and Lord. The Cadillac pulled over to the side of the road and Roger expected that he was about to get thrown out of the car. Mm -hmm. Instead, the businessman bowed his head and received Christ and thanked Roger. This is the greatest thing that has ever happened to me. Mm -hmm. Five years went by. Roger married, had a couple of kids, and a business of his own. Packing his suitcase for a trip to Chicago, he found a small white business card that had been given to him by Hamilton five years previous. In Chicago, he looked up Hamilton Enterprises. The receptionist told him that it was impossible to see Mr. Hamilton, but he could see Mrs. Hamilton. A little confused, he was ushered into a beautiful office where he found himself facing a keen-eyed woman in her 50s. She held out her hand. You knew my husband? Roger told her about how Hamilton had picked him up while he was hitchhiking home after the war. Can you tell me what day that was? Sure, it was May 7th, five years ago, the day I was discharged from the Army. Anything special about that day, she asked. He hesitated, not sure if he should mention how he shared the message of Jesus with her husband. Mrs. Hamilton, I explained the gospel to your husband that day. He pulled over to the side of the road and wept against the steering wheel. He gave his life to Christ uh, that day. Explosive sobs shook her body. Finally getting a grip on herself, she sobbed. I had prayed for my husband's salvation for years. I believed God would save him. Where's your husband, Ruby? He's dead. He was in a car crash after he let you out of the car. He never came home. You see, I thought God had not kept his promise. I stopped living for God five years ago because uh, I thought God had not kept his word. That is a true story, y'all. I just Isn't that amazing? So here, because she thought God didn't save her husband or, you know, bring someone or lead him to salvation, 
that she quit serving God. It was like, wow. And then five years later, she hears this story about how her husband got saved. And when I was listening to it the first time, when he pulled over the businessman, I thought he was going to say, get out of the car. I mean, there are so many people that are so offended by the gospel or offended by hearing about adulterous remarriage or offended about hearing some, about something they're doing. And so, yeah, I thought he was going to say, you know, um, get out of the car. And here he got saved. And then he got killed in a car accident um, right after receiving Christ. So what a story. Yeah. So I wanted to share that much with you. Um, that finished at the 48 minute mark. So that's well into Glinda's teaching. Um, she shares a lot and it really actually, like anybody that does YouTube knows that any of the longer videos, they many times don't get listened to. People got about a 20 or 25 minute tension span. Um, and I listened to this in two parts. Not that I couldn't have listened in, into in it uh, at one in one sitting, but um, I was listening in the car. I was playing it and then I stopped and I was going to listen to it the next night. And then my phone was so low in battery, I didn't dare because it's like we've been having the worst temperatures lately. So I thought I got to have, if something happens, I got to be able to call one of my kids or somebody or a tow truck. Anyway, so yeah, I just encourage you, um, if you uh, struggle with forgiveness, this teaching will just, it just yanks the slack out of us. It just reminds us the importance of walking in forgiveness with others because God commands us to, no matter what, we're in unforgiveness over. And sometimes it's horrible things. My phone's blinking at me. But, yep, we must forgive in order to be forgiven. God bless you, family.